Hey. hey. How's it going? Good. Welcome. Okay. We have the, I can, I can hear you. Can you hear me good? Yeah. Turn yeah. my volume up here. We've got the 2019 National Yo-Yo Champion. Ah. Is it better if I turn the this way? I'm on my I phone. Think, I think you have to be portrait, otherwise it's gonna, yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. But yours looks good. Mine's uh, like cutting the screen in half. Well, yeah, they, they stacks on top of each other. So oh, it's like a vertical format. Clean your cam. There you go. He's looking out for you. Is that better? <laughs> Beautiful. Looking good, man. Cool. Cool. Th thanks for joining me. Thanks for everybody who's, who's here watching. We've got a pretty solid crowd, up to 50 people watching at the moment. Yeah. Um, and well, people thanks, are asking, gonna... for having me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I was thinking the other day, I, I, I didn't get to see you too much at the National Yo-Yo Contest. Um, and, you know, this was a pretty, pretty big deal to see you go back and, like, take the title again. Um, so it's quite the journey you've been over. And I just know, like, and talking to a lot of the people on the way home, people were kind of just curious about, like, what the process was like and stuff. And I was like, oh, man, this would be a great opportunity to just kind of connect with Gentry again and, and kind of show everyone, you know, what goes into it. Um, and I might do this with some other players, too, and stuff. But obviously, you're, you're, the, you're the man to start with. Um, oh, so, thanks. yeah, I just wanted to kind of start and ask you some questions, like, about building back into, like, going for the national title again the way you had. Um, yeah. So like national, Nationals was back in Philadelphia. Um, like, when did you, like, did, did you immediately, like, after Worlds last year, decide you wanted to win the national title again? Or when did you decide you were going to go for it and go hard, I guess? I mean, I, I think every year I've decided I wanted to go for it and go hard, but, like, it can't happen every <laughs> time. Yeah, you can't win every so, year, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I was really happy that I was able to pull it off again. But I think... One thing I really kind of recognized this year was like, I've been doing this for a long time. I've, co I've been competing for nine to 10 years. And I realized that it actually doesn't really get any easier, I don't think. <laughs> I think and, so, <laughs> and so I really noticed that this year at Nationals, there were a lot of players who I would kind of see around the venue and they seem to just be getting really, really stressed out. Um, whether that was like up in the practice room or um, even just getting into the venue. Like I saw a lot of stress going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so like for me, even though like people see that I won the contest and stuff, like I just want people to remember that all the feelings that they have are the same feelings that I have too. <laughs> like, so, it, it, you so. know, I think I think that's one of the coolest parts about our community. And while I was at Nationals, that was one of the things that kind of kept coming up a couple times is people that were there, like, especially, it was pretty interesting, a lot of people were at Philadelphia for their first contest, um, which was both, like, awesome at the same time. Like, we run contests up here in Massachusetts, you know, two or three times yeah. a year. Um, Philadelphia was only about a five-hour drive from us, which was amazing. And yet we had all these people from like New Jersey and uh, Delaware, Maryland, like all were like, oh, I've never been to a yo-yo contest before. And I'm like, you yeah. run so many contests in Massachusetts. And then it was always followed by like, wow, this community is really chill. Like, it's amazing how personal everyone is and how relaxed and connected and like just how open everybody is about you know, about like, but just being real people, I think. And I, I think that's kind of one of the things you're, yeah. you're hitting on a little bit too, is that, um, you know, as competitors and stuff like that, you like to think that like, you know, here's Gentry, he's like top of his game, just goes into the zone, it clicks on and, and he knows what he's <laughs> doing. But like, we all battle with the same things everyone else does. And it's good to know that going into it because you can, you, you can, you have to work through this stuff as people and you can yeah better and when um, yeah like hard work and effort and ways to focus the energy right so yeah it's true no and like really it's it's all the same like I think actually um you know Brandon Boo of course he I was I just finished a month of the coaching program the yo-yo academy yeah with Brandon, with, with uh, Brandon? that's amazing yeah with Brandon. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and he was he was kind of telling me that like he basically everybody sees me like on stage yeah and like Instagram and 
and they see me like doing the routine that I've put so many hours into, but they don't see like the stuff behind the scenes, like the same kind of stuff that I struggle with um, preparing to go to the stage. They don't see like me messing up when I'm practicing. They don't see like me. Do you, do you mess up? Do you mess oh. up practicing? Oh yeah. I, I couldn't even stand <laughs> my routine two weeks out. Like, so I was so the... how do you how do you go from that? Like how do, how does the magic happen when you hit the stage? It, well, it's it's not magic. It's uh, <laughs> it's just, but it's funny because I think a lot of people think that it kind of is. Like that's what Brandon was saying. He's like, oh, I just kind of thought this was like a, a natural thing for you, and it's like no, <laughs> it's not. I spend like three hours figuring out how I want like my hand to be placed during a trick. <laughs> 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 But I think, I think I know, for... it's actually, it's funny that that one move in your freestyle, like, I think that got the most comments out of everybody. Oh. <laughs> Just like, 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 man, the tricks are pretty good. But did you see that move to the music, you know, and then I mean, it shows, right? So it takes that extra touch. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think, like, I want also people to know that it's not like I have any like, I just had that idea to do that and then I just tried it and practiced it and then it happened. So like if people want to do the same kind of, like if they have an idea for the freestyle, all it takes is to just try to do it and not be afraid that it's gonna look silly or um, that it's not gonna look right. Like I think yeah. well, I it, really- It kind of comes back to like, I, I really do feel like we're, we're lucky in the sense that we have a community that's pretty like welcoming to all kinds and stuff. And that like when yeah. you're on stage, like you can kind of do no wrong. People are going to cheer for you when you hit the trick and people are going to cheer for you when you don't. Um, and obviously yeah. one person has to walk away with the title. Um, but like people are pretty chill about, you know, let, letting you know that they appreciate that you just got on stage and that you put yourself out there. So, yeah, cool. So I'm curious. You, I don't know if you know this. I got my, uh, this is my favorite, my favorite yo-yo shirt. I thought that. <laughs> I think I tell you this every time. For people that don't yeah. know, this is the, the Razor Edge shutter logo, right? Um, done by yours truly, Razor right? Shark. What's that? Razor, Razor Shark. Shark. Sorry, Razor Shark. <laughs> um, came out of the sun, right? Right? Yeah. Right, the sun was Razor Shark. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I, I listen to a running remix um, a lot of mornings, like when I go for a morning run, and that's one of the songs in the remix. So like uh, every morning I hear that song. I mean, I don't listen to that same remix every morning, but you know, once a week yeah. I'm like, oh man, this brings me right back to Prague, like oh, watching yeah. Gentry, and because that song was so powerful in the moment, you know. Um, anyways, so I, I wanted I wanted to ask you since a lot of people are probably curious, what's your setup right now um, for going on stage? I'm assuming you're using shutter wide angle. Yeah, I'm using shutter wide angle, um, and then just. Uh, so what do you Kitty use for string? Kitty XL. Kitty XL. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, yellow, obviously. So yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Okay. What what pads? Um, just the natural Yo-Yo Factory pads. Cool. So like the yeah the the kind of tan colored ones. Um. Yeah. The tan. Or it's white. like a dark yeah 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 that's my favorite i think they last the longest and they kind of give the most consecutive vines so um, yeah I, for i don't i haven't noticed too big of a difference but those are the pads that i've used for so long so yeah but at the slight chance that there is a difference i don't really want to mess with it <laughs> <laughs> it's funny cause I I mean, there's, I, there's steel pads out there because for because we've been putting steel pads with the shutters um like the we have like in a minimal mark shutter we've been selling that I love. Yeah. Um, so we always put the teal pads in with those and those teal those pads look are so good. dope looking. Yeah. 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 But you don't want to like change something if you're kind of used to it at the contest stage. Yeah. Level like I, that. I don't really <laughs> think about the pads that much. Like I've used other yo-yos with like newer pads that are whatever color, but usually if I'm like practicing for a bigger contest and I wear the pads out and I want to put new ones in, yeah. I just have like a, Ben gave me like a like a bag of a hundred pads and it just This is like this is such a classic yo yo player. Like what do you use? Well somebody gave me a bag of something. I like don't know what it is anymore, but like yeah. it works pretty good. So like I'm just gonna use it for the next five years because it's it's about the supply somebody gave me and <laughs> Yeah. But honestly the, the original pads are pretty dope. I get that. That's that's what I've generally replaced my pads with too. So <laughs> yeah. what about the bearing? 
Um, so I, I've kind of switched the bearing around and stuff. I, um, I think the, I use sometimes use usually the yo-yos that I'm like messing around with. I just play with the center tracks. Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes I'll use like a concave bearing, like an NSK. Some of yeah. those are yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, but usually I only like really worry about that stuff when I'm really like nailing things down and trying to keep things consistent. Yeah. Um, so I think I use the NSK bearing, but only yeah. like, yeah. yeah but I mean, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a similar boat there because you know, a lot of people get really into their bearing types. And even today I was answering questions on Instagram about like which bearing is best kind of thing or whatever. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I came from the days where the concave was introduced when flat bearings ruled the world. And it was like, oh, my God, like, what is this? You know, and at first yeah. I hated concaves. Um, because it was too unresponsive and I couldn't like regenerate. Um, I, I mean, still remember yeah. like me and Johnny were the complete opposites because he would take a concave bearing with shims and make it so wide. Yeah. And it's exactly what we play with today. We play with yo's that don't come back. I still think his his hitman from back in the day would still be less responsive than your average yo-yo today. Um, oh, okay. You would have to bind so hard to get that thing back because the gap was just maxed out to the width and it was using like rubber o-rings not like silicone it was just black o-rings so to get that back you would have to like really pull you know just right to get that bind back kind of thing yeah. so for a long time i was like oh concaves like no thanks um and then i slowly switched to like a really tight gap with a concave um which is still like my preference like i really like a mid-range type gap with a concave bearing so i feel like concave slow really well but um, I think center tracks a pretty standard setup at this point. And so I find myself usually default into center tracks just because that's what around, but I really do love a good concave bearing too. So, yeah, I just, some of the bearings get expensive. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's kind of, it's, it's funny too. Cause like you, you'll wear through them. And so a lot of times it's good to have what you know is good to practice on. And then obviously when you get to stage, like what do you want to use is going to yeah. probably be different things sometimes at that level. Cause it's, it's a pretty fine, you know, the concave bearing is not going to mean you can't hit your trick. It's going to mean that, you know, maybe the backspin doesn't kill you or like maybe yeah. it's going to throw off the spin quite as badly. But realistically, you're almost better like practicing on a flat bearing if you want to hit everything right, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's the biggest thing is basically anything that's curved, <laughs> I think is yeah. better than yeah. that's my preference. And I think <laughs> when it comes down to that. Gentry Stein it, says no to flat bearings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but this is but this has been a pretty contentious argument on our forums lately so oh it's really pretty hilarious oh my god yeah uh, it's you know everyone's all yeah. about pick your battle yeah. pick your side you know <laughs> yeah i mean i think i think i kind of like to base my preference off of like uh competing and like overall per, like objective performance but i know some people prefer different things because they have different values and like they're looking to get something different out of their yo-yo than i am you yep. know <laughs> so <clears throat> yo-yo factory mentioned uh, is there anything changing to the wide angle shutter for worlds um i don't think so i i know <laughs> like it so in the past we've small changes have happened to like shutter and wide angle and stuff where like the weight is different a little bit and all that. But, um, yeah, I, nothing like major, I'm not like changing any shape or any yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I got a question. Yeah. Buy metal styling or standard wide angle shutter. Oh, man. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure this oh. probably gives you like way better spin time. Like I'm pretty sure so, it gives me way better spin time. So well, it, definitely it looked, it looked way better. Like, don't I look better like just holding this? I think it looks really good. So yeah, here's yeah. oh man. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because I don't know. I've always I've always felt like most of these yo-yos spin for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And I thinking back to Worlds last year, I the first combo in my routine. It was I was trying to do like a 50 second trick. Yep. And and I just couldn't my yo yo would not spin long enough. And I'm like, what's going on? Is this the yo yo that's the problem? So I tried all these other yo yos from any any yo yo you could think of, specifically like hyped up bimetal yo yos. And yep. 
even when I would do the routine, like that first trick with those yo-yos, the yo-yo would have the same amount of spin at the same part of the trick. Like at that 45 second mark, it was just yeah. enough spin to bind. So none of the yo-yos actually made any sort of difference. So <laughs> interesting for me, at least, you know, that, that's so, kind of interesting though, that that's actually how you approached it. It's like, that's a quite method. Well, yeah, to I'm figure like, out. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking, is there actually an yeah. issue here? Should I yeah. do something different? And, well, I mean, it's funny because, like, you can feel it. Like, I can feel the power behind the rim weight um, when I throw it. But I think that is a good question is, does it continue to hold that power over time? Like, maybe there's, like, a curve in which, you know, like, it's it's less powerful over time equal to yeah. the metal in some ways or something. So, yeah, I think – so, I don't know. People have talked – so much about like bi metal shutter and stuff and i don't know it's i never know like if i yeah. would make it happen if i if so i yo -Yo 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 factory is throwing some uh some comments in the chat here about about what are they saying? something some bi metal something I oh. so. so i mean if i were to ever do that it would be because i understand that certain people like that and i would want mm -hmm. to like create a product that people like but it will always stand that like I believe in mono metal shutter. Well, I believe in like the best product for the best price, meaning a product that is capable of like doing everything you need it to and is at a price that people that want to get the best can afford. So like I think it's it's um yeah, I don't know. This topic yeah. is always one and I kind of, but... going down a long road <laughs> yeah yeah Data factory says flat bearing quad metal with old school uh what they say old school mark Montrobe. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the masses want <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right so but it's, it's also one one other thing so this was the first time i won with the wide angle casper palatinsky was the awesome. first person to win with it i think but oh, yeah I think, a lot of people, wow. I think a lot of people have so, in know, the, so, so the wide angle wide angle was released after iceland is that correct yeah mm -hmm. okay and you used it at iceland right that I was did. the first time yeah. it like premiered and it was actually mm -hmm. kind of like under the radar like everyone just thought you used shutter and then like whoop yeah. there's, a, there's a new shutter um, yeah and a lot of people haven't actually tried the wide angle i think yeah, I uh, I definitely put it in a lot of people's hands, and I think they're surprised at how different it is from yeah. plastic shutter. I mean, because it's like, it really, I don't know if I have another, I should have a shutter here. Amidst all the crazy amounts of yo-yos on my desk. But it's significantly <laughs> wider, you know? Like, yeah. I bet, I bet you don't have one here. But anyways, <clears throat> so I did want to ask a little bit about like what what do you think about nationals in philadelphia compared to like nationals and other places and stuff too i think a, a big conversation lately has been like what do we want out of a contest um like what do you think about the venue the location like what's the most important thing to a contest um and you can be as critical as you want <laughs> yeah um my oh, let's see there's a lot to talk about <laughs> um i just i just want to see more people able to go to the contest and um i want i want to see more people in it like engaging with each other and interacting with each other um what what, think, what has been your favorite contest for that um let's see i have to think back a lot of different yeah contests. yeah <laughs> well i mean i can i can fill in so like for me personally um you know Pacific Northwest and Seattle has always been one of my favorites, mainly because yeah. we get a large influx of new people walking and discovering modern yo-yo for the first time. And yeah. since I'm from the East Coast, I get to meet a lot of people from the West Coast that I don't see very often. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and with that said, like when it was in Philadelphia, it was pretty impressive how many people I met that I hadn't met before because it was in a different location. Um, and surprisingly, Worlds in Cleveland, the last time was in Cleveland. Yeah. I met so many people I had not met before that came out to that contest. Um, it was kind of like dumbfounding. 
um, because, you know, for a while it was like every contest was like West Coast, that's where everybody would go. And so the community there I knew really well. And like all of a sudden Cleveland, it was like something completely different. Um, but, you know, just because I meet a lot of people, it doesn't mean it's always like the best environment. And while I think Philadelphia as a venue um, could have used some help, like it was nice to see it on the East Coast in terms of attracting some new people. Um, Chicago was decent yeah. for that. So I don't know. Yeah. Do, do you have any better idea of what your favorite was or? Yeah. So I just thinking back to like all the contests or I guess the more recent ones too, in the last like five years, um, I really liked, um, of course, worlds in Prague, not just cause I won, but yes. like, I really liked that whole venue. Um, yes. it was just a very communal kind of area and every, but I also liked worlds in Japan too. Um, yeah. And also the same thing that you were saying, Worlds in Cleveland. I really actually liked the venue a lot yeah. um, because everyone was in the same space. And so right. I know like sometimes it, I remember back when I was just getting like getting started with contests and I was maybe 12 to 13 years old. And like there were people that I really wanted to meet, but it's kind of intimidating, right? Like totally. you, you want players that you like and you have to like go break the ice and as like especially just if you're getting into it it can be intimidating so like to have a venue that is all in one place I think it kind of makes it easier on people to feel like they're more of a part of what's going on yeah, um, yeah. so that was good also um NER the year which I can't remember <laughs> I, I was there two years but both, I know, both we, want, we, we wanted you to come this past year. The flights were yeah. kind of crazy, Memorial Day. Yeah. You know, it's funny because that was one of the hard parts with Philadelphia this year is because it was over the 4th of July weekend. Um, oh, looks like we lost Gentry. But because it was over the 4th of July weekend, like the flights were nuts. Oh, you there? I, yeah, I think I accidentally clicked off of this. We're good. Cool, cool. Hey, you're back. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Magic. <laughs> I was just saying that like one of the – problems we had in northeast regionals was Memorial Day weekends flights were crazy and we had the same thing with Philadelphia this year where the flights were kind of insane because it was right yeah. after fourth of July weekend so I think like yeah. that's something I'm hoping that we'll kind of like figure out I also kind of felt like having nationals so close to worlds was like is a, is a little difficult because it's kind of taking some of the energy out of what we need for worlds with it being in the U.S. so I'm almost feeling like the next time it swings back around to the U.S. in three years like, it's almost like nationalism needs to happen, like, April or, I don't know, somewhere sooner where there's enough yeah. breathing room so that, like, you get to Worlds and you have the energy that you need to keep going. Because <laughs> it's kind of a yeah. burnout. I imagine competing and trying to balance that can be really difficult. Yeah, I think, actually, for me, like, from a, a competitive standpoint, I think it's almost, I prefer it being a little closer, but maybe, yeah. like, of is, maybe this like a good, is this a good month? split like the month like that like you, well, you yeah. pack and then you're right into worlds i mean it'd be nice if there was a little more time like yeah. maybe two months like two months. if if nationals was closer to the beginning of june or like the middle of june even right right um, but i think with them being so close it it kind of would be nice if like the nationals was on the west coast and then worlds was on the east coast or vice yeah, versa I, I completely um, agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What did you think of uh, the contest that we had in Vegas? Did you go to those? Yes, I did. Um, I. Hmm. I felt like I I really liked the idea of yo-yoing being a part of a bigger event. Yeah. Yeah. I feel okay. like. If yeah, because I mean, t for anyone who doesn't know, like when we ran the Vegas contests in Vegas, they were part of SkillCon, which was a conglomerate of too many different skills in one room. Um, so it definitely felt a little unfocused at times because of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, yeah. which year did you go? Did you go just the, the last year it happened, maybe? I think I I, 2015. Okay, I think that was last year it happened. Because um, the year prior to that actually was a slightly better year um you were I think the I did both actually yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i just I didn't compete and yeah i went to 2014 and 2015 i only competed in 2015 though got it okay okay cool yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I think Vegas as a destination is pretty cool. Like, I think a lot of people are excited to visit that, and it's easy to get into and get around and stuff like that. I agree with your – that's the, the venue skill con itself kind of thing can be a little too much. Yeah. Sometimes. But yeah. I like I like the idea of, of mixing the different things, like, like putting yo-yos mm-hmm. with the other stuff. But I feel like at an event like that, it, it – if you're going to do that, it needs to be a different type of event. Yeah. Um, more focused on just like overall everybody being able to participate. Yeah. Um, and less like judging system focused, like set to these rules. Like it'd be cool if there was more of a, just a different type of yo-yo event. Like I think if we're going to do a, a strict national yo-yo league, like event that those are better to do like on their own Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah we've talked a lot about that i think when they were talking about um bac happening again i think that was something they were talking about is kind of switching up the format of bac to be something that stands apart from national yo-yo league contest standard format and stuff because i mean you know in order for things to evolve you do have to sometimes try something different or get new people into it that yeah bored with the system or not as into it kind of thing you know lots of different options so yeah hmm. very cool so what are you doing now so you've won nationals national titles under your belt now your your sights are set on worlds yeah nice and so like is that i mean i feel like i would come out of winning nationals and just being like you know maybe i just want to (laughs) stop Um, you're, at, you're at the top, but you want to keep going. So, like, like yeah. what's, what's, the, what's going through your head right now? Are you are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you um, focused? So, yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm not like doing this still just for the titles. And as much as I want to win, um, when I got too caught up in winning was when I wasn't able to win. <laughs> Um, so like I, I won worlds in 2014 and then nationals the next two years. But then after that, like, I think I was too caught up, like, especially last year, I just stressed myself out so much and I just got in a really bad mindset and I didn't, I wasn't prepared enough, even though I could, I could land my routine like with five or less negatives almost every time, but it didn't translate to the stage. And then I had like 20 mistakes at worlds. And so it, I just got in too much of a, a stressed mindset. Yeah. And so for this year for nationals, I really put most of my focus on straying away from that and just trying to enjoy it and accept whatever happens and like truly be okay with if I, I didn't reach my goal. And so I was able to be a lot more natural on stage and it just felt better. And it was just a much better experience overall. Nice. Um, and I was even able, like another cool thing is like, I was even able to kind of carry that to the contest and like talk to other people about it. Like I said earlier in the call, there were a lot of people that were really stressed out at nationals. And like, yeah. I just talked with a couple of them a little bit and like it, I was trying to kind of spread that feeling of just like having fun and being okay with whatever happens. And I really do think it, it works well. Um, yeah. So that, that's kind of what I'm trying to do for it is, it is the one world. Of those funny things, right? It's like the more you want something and the more you focus on wanting that, like the harder it gets to get what you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't think it matters like what you're doing in life. It's kind of like that. It's a pretty big message. Um, you know, it can be all consuming, get in our heads. I think that's one of the interesting things I see with yo-yo players in general is that the older you get, um, we people tend to get in their heads a bit more and they kind of get yeah. so hyper-focused on like needing to win. Whereas like when you're 12 <laughs> and you're like, oh man, like I'm just so excited. I just got this new yo-yo and I just learned this new trick. Yeah. And I'm just going to go on stage and show this trick. And that's when you succeed. It's like when you're not trying to, to you know get that goal right like yeah exactly, you yeah. know you try so hard and it just doesn't happen so I, so that's yeah, interesting I, so going into worlds you, you know obviously you want to win 
obviously that's a yeah. goal to, to take a, another world title. Because right now you're at four national titles. Mm-hmm. Is that right? And then one yeah. world title. And yeah. so, man, two, two and four would be pretty dope. Um, no pressure, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I agree. <laughs> but yeah. you're going to go into it with the mindset of just like, you know, I'm here to put on a good show and have fun. And that's kind of, yeah. you know. Yeah, and 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 um, truly understanding and believing that really nothing will change regardless of what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and so I, another big thing too is like last year, I really felt like I had to win because I I had put so much focus into just that. But this year, I I launched the Icon line. I launched the Yo-Yo Academy, um, and so. Yeah. It, like having those things too is like some of the Give calls the perspective I... that like it's yeah. not just about this one thing to be successful exactly. right? so. yeah like some of the calls that i'm having are like really really rewarding and it's really fun to do that and so it's like i i know that like okay if i don't do well at the contest that's okay i can still like rep the icon stuff i can still do the yo-yo academy like i still have other stuff that's involved with yo-yoing that I can yep. still have fun with and not really worry about it too much. Love it. Nice. Yeah. So, so real quick, and I'm taking up a decent amount of time. This is turning into a oh, longer. I'm interview. good. I set I okay. aside as much awesome. time as we need. Yeah. Two hours. <laughs> no, let's do it. <laughs> I, I was curious, actually, you, you mentioned it. So your, um, your yo-yo Academy thing, um, mm-hmm. is that what it's called? What's, what's the actual name of it? Yeah, the Yo-Yo Academy. Yeah, Yo-Yo Academy. So, so, yeah. So it's been going for two months now, a month and a half. Uh, or? Yeah. So, um, actually, glad you brought it up because I'm planning on releasing a little update video soon. But this is a a nice little nice. pre-update. Um, cool. So I did. I I released like three different packages, kind of that people could right. get. Um, so one of those was the one month coaching. The other yep. was music edit for help editing freestyle songs. And then the yep. third was a freestyle critique, like a one hour session where we work right. together. Um, and so the first two, I, I was only offering two of the one month courses yep. or like yep. sessions because I didn't want to like overdo it while I was prepping for nationals. Right. Um, but those instantly like were taken up in the first day. Yeah. Um, so I, awesome. I didn't have any slots open to offer to people, um, but I actually just opened slots up again. So I have more slots available. So if people want to do that, they can. I'm just nice. scheduling stuff right after Worlds. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, leading up to Nationals, I was also doing a few of the one-hour sessions too. Nice. Um, there was, and yeah. So, so two, that must have been pretty cool that, going into Nationals like helping someone with their freestyle and then getting to see them on stage at nationals. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it was That's super awesome. cool. Huh? Yeah. And, and so did you see like a real change? Like, like, I mean, that's like, you know, it's funny. Cause, um, as I got into yo-yo Wayne and started working like with yo-yo jam back in the day and stuff like that and started teaching, I quickly found that like, for me, um, I got so much more out of watching people, succeed out of me teaching them tricks than me getting on stage and <laughs> succeeding you know like it's like it, i got that same high but sometimes even that much higher yeah. when like someone goes and wins and i feel like that must that oh must yeah feel just good if not almost better when you can see like yeah. man this person just went on stage and killed it and i, would, yeah. I wish you could have seen <laughs> like so like i i helped casper a little bit with his lead up to uoyc um Casper Palatinsky and and so we had been talking for like three months and working together a little bit for that and like it just like you were saying it it can sometimes even be more rewarding like I I remember going and pulling up the live stream and like just cheering being like let's go Casper and I was like so pumped up watching him yeah yeah and and hearing like that he won like I was I was so pumped up from that like probably more than actually winning nationals myself like it right. and, but even like with kids who are newer to competing it's cool to see them utilizing some of like 
the guidance that I gave. Um, and then it's cool to see them being more confident on stage too. Cause I think the the judging system is pretty complicated. Totally. And, and so there's so many things to think about, like with what you need to do in order to do well in the contest, but also do something entertaining and, and all those things tie together, but it's, it's hard for someone to know what they need to do in order to actually take the next step to do better. Right. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun working with people and then yeah. it's even cool being yeah. them on stage. The results come out of that stuff. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. So, so that's cool. So you've been doing like the freestyle breakdowns. I think I kind of cut you off a little bit too. Are you, are you still doing the music edits too? Yeah. Yeah. Mostly people have been wanting to, um, like work with me directly on the freestyle. So I think people are choosing more of that, but, um, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited to see, um, who else I'll be working with. Do you, do you find with music edits, are you kind to try and like, do they, do they have a song in mind? And then you're like going, okay, like we're going to add a transition here. Or we're going to add kind of like a, a hit here for you to help um you know kind of add some amplitude into this trick or add some kind of pull to make it time with the beat like is that kind of yeah. angle you're taking when you come to like making a freestyle song for somebody so or is um, it like you have with, to choose from the gentry stein collection of songs here no, so, <laughs> yeah so let, i'll kind of explain explain all that a little bit so um I have a pretty, uh, I've taken a lot of time to kind of create a way, like I, it's kind of hard to explain this in a brief way. Um, in the yo-yo contest, whether you're doing a prelim, semifinal, two minute or three minute, there's, we're given a specific set of time and then we're judged on all of these different things that all tie together. So like all the performance evals, they all tie together. Yep, so yeah. the music is the base of that. So I feel that if somebody structures, if you can structure your song in a specific way, it can have a huge impact on the way you're able to choreograph it to music, um, the way you're able to keep the audience's energy at different points um, along the routine. Oh, um, so, and so if you have your song, let's say the song you choose is five minutes long but you're doing you're practicing a one and a half minute semifinal. that five minute song is not going to be structured most likely it's not going to be structured for with one a, and a half an minute ending. freestyle yeah, that, right. exactly yeah. so so the music edits are heavily about like structure interesting um, structure for a yo-yo contest so so do you do you find that you're still starting at the beginning of the song and then you have to try and figure out where you're going to end it um so like we can use my my uh i guess even my national song for example yeah yeah um so i it's a lot of people have heard the the song it's it's by the weekend uh -huh. um and so i actually use two different versions of that song um, and so I, I kind of cut out one section from the, from the original song and then had that lead into a different part of the remix version. Um, yeah. and then cut out parts of the intro to make sure that, you know, my, my intro is exactly the amount of time that I want it to take because I, I know what tricks I kind of want to do at the beginning. And so I have to structure things out so that way I can make sure that the build up and the intro ends at a specific time so that way as it leads throw it on in the background there so oh okay yeah um but really it can get complicated but it's it's all about the structure of it um and and what a lot of people don't think about is like by heavily going into detail with all of these different aspects of what you're judged on including your music use and body control and showmanship and space use of that like there's very specific things that you can do to help you score higher in all of that and i think a lot of that is rooted in um the structure of the the music so yeah it's it's more about the, with the music edits helping give that structure to it um but then with like let's say the one month coaching thing 
will go into detail on like if they want to learn a little bit on how to like how do i structure or how do i make the decision yeah. on how to structure the song and how do you then take the edit that you've just made and then how do you plan to put a trick to that and how do you start to think about your body movement with the trick um yeah and so yeah. all things tie together so so just to kind of answer your question again like the with like the one month coaching that would be more focused on helping give really useful knowledge over a period of time um and then like the music edit would mainly just be to get their song structured well so they can just go use it at the contest take any other curse words out um just get it structured and then the the freestyle critique is more of if they're preparing for something or, or they have a freestyle that they want to do then making sure that we go through the freestyle and make sure that we take certain parts out if they're not scoring as well or giving them a few ideas on how to um, emphasize the trick with music at different parts. Um, so stuff like that. Yeah. I, I hope mean, that shows, like if anyone has watched your national routine, I think um, you do a really good job having a beginning, middle and end and taking your movements and, and meshing them and also transitioning from like, different types of tricks between the segments of the song itself you know like it really does feel like a really well distributed freestyle that that has the beginning has the middle has the hey. end you know it, it is it yeah. is you hey. know people don't realize like you know when they they're watching somebody on stage like how much thought has gone into it um and you know i can see it and i mean everyone obviously too it's a very personal thing you know i think um yo, -yo players are like truly artists when it comes to trying oh, to put yeah. this on with the with the tricks together and stuff and everyone is going to have their different outlook on what that looks like um but i think like what you've created um is a really intelligent approach to it um and something that really is appealing to like everybody because i think there's some players who can appeal to yo-yo players at that level um who can sync the tricks at a level that yo-yo players appreciate i think what you do is you kind of hit both angles where it's like you know, if you're not into yo-yoing, you can really appreciate what you've done. And if you're into yo-yoing, you can see the subtle aspects of it. It's all just there. So, you know, yeah. kudos to you. So. Oh, well, thanks. I think <laughs> it's, it's all like, to me, it's just like a big game. Like, I, I realize that I think it's important to recognize there's always people who, like, I think there's a lot of yo-yo players that are way better than me. <laughs> but... <laughs> Sometimes I've been able to beat them because of the way I've approached the contest and yeah. the the thought that I put into different areas. So I think that's a good thing for like a lot of, especially up and coming players to recognize is as yo-yo players, we all literally, I think every yo-yo player deals with this. Like they watch someone else yo-yo and it makes them feel like, wow, that, that trick was so good. Like I don't have any tricks that are that good. Or like that routine was amazing. How do I, I can't do that. And so by playing the game right, you can totally give yourself a huge advantage, but it just, it's, it's not easy. You know, it's a, it's a whole nother aspect to competing too. Um, yep. So that's kind of mainly what I'm trying to offer. And, and that's what I think has helped me be successful in contests is, um, coming at the approach in a in a really strategic way love it yeah all right <laughs> so two, i want to do two things i want to ask you one more question related to worlds and then yep. people submitted questions through instagram and i'm going to take a quick look through um yeah and maybe cool. ask you a couple of those too um it says so my, still 49 oh sorry what's that go ahead Oh, it says there's still 49 viewers, but for some reason, all the comments stopped for me. Oh, no. Are you still getting Instagram's comments? Instagram's glitching out on your side, so. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll read them to you as I, as I see them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and I, and I actually had posted a story, so people submitted questions in one of the, the stories that way, so I can run through those pretty yeah. easily and nicely organized. Um, but I, I was curious, so, you know, for people who are thinking about going to Worlds for the first time, should they go? It's in Cleveland this year, in case you don't know. Um, and like, what's your advice to somebody who's thinking about going to a contest for the first time kind of thing? Yeah, um, I'm glad you, I'm glad this is a question. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, so 
I mean, obviously, I would say I think anyone should try to go. I think it's one of the best investments you can make to experience the World Yo-Yo Contest. Yeah. Um, and and if you can make it, um, I would say don't like don't be scared to just engage with people and don't be scared to go up to the person that you've been wanting to meet and talk to them and don't be afraid to ask people to teach you tricks and and don't feel like you see all these people around that you know have a similar interest to you but don't feel like you can't go approach them like just try to let all that go and just like go do it and and go learn the trick go meet the person you're wanting to meet like just open yourself up and like, you know, go experience it as much as you can is what I I love it. That's good advice. Yeah, I would say the same too. And I think it's like, you know, um, before we were getting ready to go to nationals, a lot of people on our team were asking like, you know, is it worth going? What can you do and stuff? And I think that's something that you get when you start going to these larger contests is that like being around all these people that share this common thing that you're into, um, it's been one of the best parts of like, just as I was growing up, I mean, I got into yo-yos <clears throat> when I was like in high school. Um, so like late teens and stuff like that. And like going through college and like going and meeting people through yo-yo was probably like the best time of my life. Like it was, it's so much fun just to hang out with people that have that same kind of mindset. It's almost like about life. Like people think about, like yo-yo players are just dope people. Like where they think about things in a really similar way, they're very open-minded. I find um, they like a lot of the same things. They're just like it's it's like you already have a friend. Like all you do is you pull out a yeah. yo-yo, and then like the other person pulls out a yo-yo, and you're like, oh, like hey, what's up? Like we're chill already. Like I could just like go out to dinner and have a full conversation with you. Like there's no awkwardness. Actually, there's a lot of awkwardness, but like you know, it, it's, it's also it, it's not yeah. the type of awkwardness you would expect. You know, like it's it's the good kind. <laughs> It's the yeah. kind where it's like, oh man, like this is awesome. So yo-yo dating one hundred and one at yo-yo contest, guys, it's awesome. So, but no, it's true. Yeah. It, you, if you go to yo-yo contest, you really need to just put yourself out there, meet people, and you'll be surprised at how awesome everybody else around you. So, yeah. Awesome. All right, let's see. Oh, here's one. How does Gentry Stein do his hair? Still getting this question. They should Did be you asking. get this one on YouTube too? I'm, I'm guessing there's a YouTube video out there where you've answered they be, it. They should be asking you. Look at that. Did you just get a fresh cut recently, Andre? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, I don't I mean I don't know how to answer this question. I think I think uh I think it starts with getting a good haircut. Nice, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's because it's like it's like if you if you go to a good barber and they and they hook you up, then they'll show you what to do for your own hair, because everyone's <laughs> got different hair. So, yeah. Do you have any hints about things you have planned with Yo Yo Factory in the near future? Um. Yeah, we have we have a few things cooking. <laughs> um. <laughs> We have we have <laughs> new colorways coming out soon, which are really nice. Really nice. Yeah, that's right. It's like Yo Yo Factory's Instagram story teased that. So uh, yeah. Any any yeah. hints? Any any um, color spectrum? What are what so are we, we have, are they fades? Have, are they solids? We have a Casper edition wide angle coming. Dope. Dope. Which which will uh, I'm excited to to do that with him to. Uh, collaborate on the on the color and all that with him and nice it'll be cool to have our, both of our names on the same yo-yo yeah that's <laughs> um, but that one that color i'm not going to say what it is but it, it turned out like amazing so i'm really excited for that um and then we have a really cool one that it's something that i when we first started doing the polish shutters i hoped was possible but but then I was told that it's not possible, and everyone at Yo-Yo Factory thought, oh, it's not possible to do this. But then we got a sample, and we realized, oh, wait, maybe this is possible. So All right. it's something super cool. Um, nice. So, yeah. And then maybe maybe something extra special for, like, Christmas time, too, we're, we're kind awesome. of planning. So. Very, and now's the time, right? So Yeah. 
Um, this was a good one. Are you going to have a new routine for the World Yo-Yo Contest? Um, so uh, people, people ask this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. But I think, so let me think about or, the way Or is the answer, um, you don't know yet? <laughs> well, okay. So I think in order to make a routine that is, is, um, I have specific goals with competing in order to make that fits those goals like I want to win the contest totally. so I think a well, lot and, of and people... this is coming back to our conversation earlier too where it's like okay nationals just happened less than a month we're standing in Cleveland on the on a stage trying to you know yeah like is there even and time so to, to win, to a win routine world no well there there's time to build a routine but but it's not like I'm I'm aiming to get like high fours to fives in the evals and like yeah. and and so in order to do that at worlds like it it takes a lot of work to think heavily about everything you're doing with the routine so you know i i could make a new routine like a completely new routine with a new song and different tricks and stuff but it's it's not going to be polished it's not going to have the same um timeline of structure um and so it's it's i don't think it's ever realistic to like make a new a completely new routine in a short amount of time if your goal is to make the best routine you can yeah no i mean it makes sense i mean so maybe what yeah. you're saying is an evolution of what you've done at nationals or i'm close to yeah same. i mean to be completely honest like to be completely honest I, I feel pretty happy with the routine that I've made. Like yeah. I feel confident it's with it. So solid. last year I made a lot of changes to mm -hmm. my routine. It was still the same song, but I made a lot of changes to the routine and I wasn't able to land it. Right. So the risk you there, take. Will, there will be differences with the routine. I like um, that. It's going to be the same song. Huh? Uh, just cut out can for a second. You can keep talking though. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. So the the differences will be with areas of the routine that I hope I want to encourage people to look at the routine for different aspects of it. Like if if people see the same routine, like if people hear the same song and see the basically the same tricks, they think it's the same, but there will there are other things that can be different so i'm planning to polish up the the movement on stage even more all my body movement like all of that like i i think i can make this routine even better um and so that's that's my approach and i think that's the the most strategic approach for me um is to is to just try to figure out what small things i can do to make this routine um kind of pop more and and feel even more special. Love it. So yeah. expect expect the winning routine with some surprises. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like it. Cool. So yeah, I mean, I think this was pretty good. I, I uh, appreciate you kind of just jumping in. I uh, I texted Gentry end of last week and then he was like, yeah. And then this morning was like reminded him he still want to do this. And we didn't really talk or plan much. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this came together. You're yeah, you're not yeah. awesome person. I, I had it penciled in in my <laughs> schedule. <laughs> we're we're lucky to have you in the world of yo-yo. I think you bring a lot of really positive, uh, you know, aspects to just in terms of how people take competition seriously, oh. and you know, the shutters. Uh, Shutter, according to Hans, is the the most important yo-yo and in yo-yo innovation history, right? So. <laughs> I think it's a big one for sure. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it, Andre. And I think I I also want to thank you just because I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do any of the stuff that you're thanking me for if it wasn't for you too. So, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. 
Oh, I appreciate it. So if anybody wants to find out anything more, obviously they can visit gentrystein.com. Um, yeah. And they know where to find you on Instagram, clearly. And obviously you have YouTube. Um, and you're still pretty active going with YouTube. I've been pretty impressed. You're, you're kind of continuing to follow through with new video, new content pretty regularly. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done as much over the last month or so just because yeah. prepping nationals and stuff. There's still a few yeah. videos that I've filmed that I haven't released.